G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. Today is 12 volt day, we're gonna finish the wiring. I've got lights to mount and I'm getting very excited because the trailer is getting so close to getting out for a camp. So let's go. Now before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to let you guys know that I am now a bloody dad. I have a baby boy, his name is Wolf. He was born on the 11th of January and I've kind of kept it under wraps from YouTube a little bit. I don't really share my personal life too much. Obviously having a baby does take up a lot of time so my videos might be a little bit scattered but I am going to continue to try and do this at the best rate I possibly can without stressing myself or my family out too much. Honestly can't wait for the adventures with him on this channel. We're going to do camping, full driving, all that sort of stuff. I want to use YouTube as sort of like a memory bank for myself so not only will we be doing workshop videos but we'll also be doing like touring videos and 4 by 4 videos just as a family they won't always be really hardcore tracks it'll just be like family friendly sort of adventures that we can go on as a family and I'm very excited for that so now we have the perfect excuse to buy a touring car so I want you guys to comment down below what you guys would buy I'm sort of thinking a series 4 patrol at the moment and also i got a pretty good excuse to grow a dad mod now too. So without further ado, let's get stuck into today's video now. All right, in the last episode, guys, we managed to knock up this floor. We also laid that marine carpet on there and she is looking bloody thick. Now we did get these uh, panels here mounted and we did change out like one, two USB and all that, but none of this is wired up. So in today's video, we're going to be wiring that up. We're also gonna be doing our lights. I've chucked the rack on because Harry was here yesterday. He gave me a hand to lift it um, and chuck the rack on. We're gonna be mounting lights on each corner at the back and probably one on each side. We're also gonna be doing some little floodlights underneath and then some canopy lights inside. And I honestly think today we might even be able to chuck the tent on top. This thing is getting bloody close to getting out for a camp. So one of the first things I wanna do is quickly uh, drill and mount this rack onto it. Measured it up, it's sitting perfectly in the center. So all I gotta do is chuck some bolts in. Then once that's mounted, we can start lifting it up. I wanna take the floor out and just leave that panel in. Start laying all our wiring that we need to do. Honestly, fingers crossed that I have enough wiring because we are experiencing massive floods at the moment. My thoughts and prayers are going out to anyone that is affected by these floods. It's now Sunday, it's been raining straight since Friday, I believe and it's just starting to ease off, so that's why I'm in the shed. So since we can't leave, if we don't have enough wiring, I'll probably have to continue this video to another day. Oh, and another massive, massive upgrade that we have is we now have power in the shed. I don't know if you guys didn't know this, but we had the lights hooked up to an extension lead and I had no power in the shed right up until this episode. So this is super exciting for me, but obviously we have no lights, we now have lights, where before I had just an extension lead plugged in, which means all my power is now hooked up throughout the shed. We have six of these power points and I went out and bought these adapters so I can charge USB. I finally can have a desk fan. I can charge my torches. I've even got the bloody drill press hooked up. Look at that. I even got the air compressor hooked up, boys. The other thing I've always struggled with is lighting in the shed, but as you can see, I now have a ring light that I can plug in. I mean, I've always had the ring light, but I've just never been able to plug it in. So that is cool to have that. Another huge upgrade that I've never been able to do is I put a fan in. So all I got to do is come over, pull this, fan turns on. I also coupled that fan with one of those whirly bird extractor things, and that is going to pull the heat from the shed up through the roof. If you guys aren't here for that, you're here to see the trailer. So let's get this tub rack mounted, and then we can move on to some wiring. Absolutely bucketing down rain right now. That's a lot of rain, man! Can't, can't film with this stuff. Crazy. 
So since it's raining so hard, I figured that I would do a voiceover on this part. As you can see, I'm sliding the canvas zipper in so I can zip this tent up properly and we can figure out exactly where we want to mount the lights. I know I want to mount them to the legs of the tub rack, but I didn't want the tent to get in the way when you're unzipping and zipping it back up. And just for aesthetic reasons, I didn't want that canvas to overhang the light. But you can see in this last clip that I managed to get it just under the canvas and it's not going to get in the way of the zipper. And I'm going to use this as a segue to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Have you heard about Fulcrum sale? It's 50% off their click and fit system. Fulcrum's done 50% off. 100% I'll take it. So guys, the Bogan bus has come pretty far, but the last piece of Bogan on this bus is the suspension. Now Fulcrum have jumped on board and they're gonna send us out some of their new suspension to chuck on Harry's rig. Not only are they sending that out, they're also having a 50% off sale on their click and fit system for the month of March. Now click and fit allows you to buy your suspension online and get local fitment. So 50% off the installation of your suspension is huge guys. We all know how much it sucks installing suspension on your driveway or in your shed. Without a hoist, it just sucks. So definitely jump on their website, jot your rego details in. It'll come up with all the suspension that's correct for your car. They're one of the only guys that do the rego check, which I think is great because it just means you're not gonna get the wrong parts. In addition to this, in the month of March, three lucky people will get their suspension fitted completely free. So now's the time to jump onto their website and get that quote. Righto, now that the rain's eased off just a tiny bit more, I can talk again. And we have got a fuse block mounted in there. Now what that's good for is the bottom terminal right there only have to run back to positive and that livens up that whole strip. So then anything that I wanna take positive out of there, I just take it from one of those side things. So what I'm gonna do now is just start making leads for this. Now it looks a little bit confusing, but if you break it down, it's actually pretty easy. These two are for the actual lights on the switch because it has a large light and then a little small light right there. And obviously then we've got a red and a black, positive, negative, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now these are just negative ones and then I need to run the positive to a fuse and then that way these will also have power as well. So I'm probably just gonna chuck these on time-lapse and just bowl this out. It's just a lot of crimping, a lot of soldering, stuff like that. Pretty boring stuff. Once I get it live, I'll then come back to the camera and we can have a look at how it all works. rain seems to have calmed down a bit. What I'm up to now is I've got that panel just sitting in there. Um, obviously we're gonna fix that up later. I basically got all of this wired up 
and I've got this live and then the only thing I need to do now is actually just run all the wires for the lights back to these switches and we should have power. And you can see at the bottom there, that's my main power wire coming in. That brings 12 volt to this whole fuse block and then I'm taking 12 volt out to all our accessories. I've also done a common earth down there. Now there is also a big wire going back to the battery negative just to help with that earth. Those are the two main wires feeding that fuse block. And then I've also made a short little lead that I just got to put connectors on it for the fridge plug there because that's on an Anderson. So I'm making progress, but it's very slow at the moment. So I'm just going to keep bowling through it. It's time to wire up the light. Now with these lights, all I'm going to do is take this negative wire and put a little terminal on it. And that is going to go onto a screw and that'll be the earth. And then I only have to run the power wire down the beam through one of those waterproof glands and back to a switch. Same with these ones, put a ring on the earth just to connect to the back of this bolt. That way you're not running two wires. I'm only running the one positive wire from each set of lights. And the way I think I'm gonna switch them is I think I'll have this light, which is gonna be my kitchen light on one switch. I'll have these two rear lights on one switch and two side lights on one switch. And that's just so if we get to camp and there's someone say camping on our side, I don't want all the lights on blinding one person. I will be able to control where the light's coming from. I have also got these RGB strips in. They are just resting there. They did have tape on them, but they're not very sticky on my floor. So I'm gonna have to glue those ones in if I'm happy with it. And they are wired up to a control module back there. And the control module has a remote control. So I'll be able to just sit back, put some party lights on, make them orange so the bugs don't come. What do you reckon about the rain, Diesel? <laughs> if anyone wants to buy one of these cardboard Shredder 3000s, they're really, really efficient at shredding your cardboard so you can fit it in your wheelie bin. For six payments of uh, $69.95, you too can have your own Diesel Shredder. Diesel Shredder. Righto, as you just seen, I have got a waterproof gland in. Now I just put some temporary zip ties, all this will actually get put in that uh, conduit, but for now it's just zip tied up, just give me a length. And we have it all soldered up and heat shrunk very nicely. So all the lights are wired up and I've got it plugged into my rocker panel. I have no idea what is gonna do what, but I can always change that around. So it is time for the moment of truth. Have I stuffed it up? Have I wired it right? God only knows because I'm freaking tired. The only thing left to do is actually just connect it to the battery and hopefully I've done everything right. I've double checked everything. There's a couple of loose terminals, but I'm not gonna worry about that at the moment. Should connect up all right. All I have to do is hook these two up and uh, hopefully we don't light the bloody shed on fire and this whole thing goes up in smoke. That would definitely not be fun at all. So fingers crossed that this is wired up right and I've connected all the things I need to connect. There's no shorts. There's no earths where they're not meant to be earths. Let's give it a crack. No fires yet. So far, so good. Now we've got, that's probably because I didn't put fuses in the fuse holder. So let me chuck some fuses in it. Right, I've just gone through and chucked some five amp fuses in all of the slots. 
And as you can see, we've got lights on the switch. We have a light there. Also this USB, which I imagine is the one I bought separate. That's lighting up, which means that we have got pretty good power. So now let's see if these lights work. I'm actually quite nervous. We got one, or oh, we got the side ones. So they're working. Shit, they're, pr they're bloody bright actually. So we got the rear. They're not really what I was expecting. They're kind of like not really great. And then we've got the kitchen light working. Great. The lights have checked out. We now have full power to every light and we now have a 12 volt circuit complete. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect the battery real quick and we'll actually just quickly tidy out this wiring. I just wanted to make sure that everything worked before I put conduit around it and then find out we have a problem. If I have enough, we'll conduit that. We'll have a tidy up, then we'll turn the lights off and we'll see how much light we've actually added. All right, I've just had a massive clean up and I am freaking loving this trailer now. I got it all tucked up nice and neat under there with the conduit. You can't even see it from back here. All you can see is those little pod lights, which is great. These two lights are kind of weird. They're like very big circle lights. I don't really like it. I kind of need to get two more of them up here, but I just wanted to be careful just in case I wanted to use this as storage. I didn't want a pod light hanging down too low, which is why I went with them. I absolutely love how this has turned out. Look how tough, look how tough that looks. Looks so good. So now that everything is wired up and ready to go, I'm gonna kill the lights and I'm gonna turn on these lights and we're gonna see how she looks at night. For the kitchen, bang, heaps of light for the kitchen. And then last but not least, I've got this little remote here, bang. So we've got RGBs in the back, we can make them do dance moves, I think. There we go. Now the best thing about these lights is I can actually just chuck them on full orange. Now that won't attract the bugs. Then we can come along, turn all our lights off. When I had the Navara, I had very similar lights and I just left them like this at night. All night long, I left them like that just so if you got up to the toilet, you could actually see. So what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments if you like this lighting setup or if you think it needs more, less, anything you would change. I'm always reading the comments. The positivity that has been on the past two videos is unreal. You guys are absolute legends for commenting. So we're basically finished with the custom 12 volt system. So I'm going to tick that one off there. There's a couple little things I want to add, but we can at least get that ticked off for now. Once again, guys, I am sorry about the rain. I only get one day a week to do my filming. Today, I was hoping it would actually clear up, but it's just rained all day. So thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll catch you guys on the next episode. See you later.